Hey guys, today we are creating this little critter called a Niffler from Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them. You'll want a board around 13 inch round and pop some ganache off centre towards the back. This is a 6 inch round Oreo cake, a regular vanilla cake with chunks of Oreo and filled with Oreo buttercream. Layer them up until you have 4 layers of cake. To create the sack shape, we are trimming in all around the bottom to round it out. Then we want to do the same thing around the top edge before hacking off chunks here and there to create a bit of movement for the sack of jewels. Now to create lumps in the bag, Add all your cut-offs to some remaining buttercream and mix it together to create a type of cake dough. There's no specific ratio, just throw it in and give it a mix together. Yep, I have to admit, it's not the most appetising looking mixture, but it's like a nice cookie flavoured cake pop. We just want to take small pieces to bulk out the top of the bag and also add the odd lump on the sides. The buttercream should stick itself and create this sort of shape. Add a rough layer of ganache to seal it all in. This is a little runnier than I usually use, it's just too warm, but it's only the first layer so it'll be fine to use. Once that's set you can add the second layer. You'll see it's helped firm it up so it doesn't wobble around. An acetate smoother is great for smoothing out ganache on an odd shape. Just bend it and allow it to follow the contours. Once it's set, dampen the shape and cover the very top with the black paste. Cut a circle out. This will be the inside of the bag. For the bag itself, roll out a piece of pale brown paste and wrap it around the sides rather than draping it over the top. Trim off some extra paste just to make it easier to work with. This is a cell pin. It's like a small mini rolling pin with a point on the end. However, any chunky round tool will do, like a paintbrush handle or a fat pencil. Push this down behind the paste to create a channel and then just squeeze the channel into a fold. Round the back, you can just loosen the paste, add a fold in and then flatten it back down. Trim the overlap and merge the cut edges together. With a scraper or a flat edge, push the paste underneath the bag to bring back the rounded edge. Then cut off any extra with the scalpel. Push the very tops of the folds down and gather them at the top so it can be cut cleanly back into a circle. If you want, you can add more detail to the bag by marking in crease lines with your fingers. For the Niffler's body, I'm using Renshaw black modelling paste. You can use regular black sugar paste with Tylo powder added if you want, which is what I would usually have used, but I've started buying modelling paste just for ease and making it a tad quicker. You want to make a mound sort of shape, pushing the bottom flat and teasing the top up. Add this to the top and mark in some wavy fur lines with the Dresden tool. A large flattened oval creates a head. Slide a kebab stick down the body to hold the head and lower it down using a Dresden tool to add more fur lines and join it to the body. Don't forget the back. The Niffler snout is quite long, so we're going to support it with a cocktail stick. Make some flesh coloured paste and keep some aside for the paws. Roll a ball and then use one of your fingers to roll across a third of it to create a large lump on one end and a smaller lump on the other. Tap 
collapse the smaller lump into a wider, flattened snout. The larger end needs flattening upwards and then two flattened discs can be pulled outwards. You do end up with this weird shape. Slowly push the snout onto the stick and flatten the face part against the head. For the cheeky smile, mark in a curve across the end of the snout and then take the lines down each side, ending it with a press of the Dresden tool for dimples. Mark in two small nostrils on the end. These always come in handy, kids craft sponges. I have various shapes as you often need different sizes. Place sponges underneath the snout to hold it up whilst it dries. Mark in eye sockets with a large ball tool and then fill them in with a black ball of paste or large dragers. Finish them off with two sets of catch lights in white sugar paste. To help merge the face to the head, you can add sausages of black paste and pull down fur lines over the flesh colour with the Dresden tool. You know what to do here, cover the board using the toilet seat method. The full video is always in the description box below. Using a nice straight edge, I always have a solid metal strip in my toolkit, which comes in handy for lots of jobs. Mark in straight lines on the board for bricks. Anywhere the metal won't reach, it can just be extended with a Dresden tool. Then add in the horizontal lines for your brick pattern. Favourite texture mat coming out again, scrunched up foil. Press this all over the board. You can flatten the foil too to fit under the cake and get right into the tight spots. Remark any lines that have misaligned themselves and add cracks and texture to some of the bricks. Trim the board again. All that pressure squashes the paste around. Airbrush the whole board with black airbrush colour. Again, all the tools I use are listed in the description box. Don't worry if you get some on the lower part of the cake. Shadow would naturally occur there anyway. Once it's covered, go in closer and more precise following each line to darken it. And then over it again, slightly further away for a thicker shadow line where the brick edges are a little dirtier. Wet around the circle edge and cut out a little circle strip of the pale brown paste. It's done very much like the toilet seat method. Press and thin out the outer edges with your fingers. Wrap it around the niffler, pressing the inner edge down and closing the join at the back. We want to give the top of the bag movement, so grab those craft sponges. Tuck hearts, cars, faces and dolphins under the paste to shape it. If they won't stay, pop an acupuncture needle in. Whilst that dries, we can work on the board. I don't want to bore you with the name cutting again as I do it in pretty much every video. But you just want to trace your name on greaseproof paper, place the paper on some paste, mark around the letters and then just follow along the lines with a scalpel to cut them out. This one is a fantastic beast type of font. You can take your pick on sites such as dafont.com or 1001 free fonts, also linked below. We are using a lot of gold in the treasure, so I thought I'd make the name silver. This is silver decorative luster, non-edible, but it's all going on the board which can be removed and not eaten. To make this into a paint, I mix it with lemon extract. To make sure I don't overdo it, I use a handy dropper bottle, which just so happens to be skull shaped of course. I have some of these in my shop also listed below. Just paint it straight on with a paintbrush. Carefully remove the sponges once you think it's set enough. 
For the paws, flatten an oval of paste and mark in three lines. Separate the claws and round them out into points. Add one near his face, holding the top of the bag. As we are adding weight here, feel free to put one of the sponges back in until it feels fully set. Now, I seem to have lost the footage for the string, but it's a brown string twisted into a rope and added around the top of the bag and two pieces trailing down. For the treasure, you can pretty much use any mould that you have. This one is a button mould with various designs in. I'm particularly going to use the large top one as it looks quite like an ornate coin. And some of the smaller ones make great fillers for bits of treasure and jewels. This one is homemade. I had some silicone put it a few years back to make your own moulds. It comes in a blue and white part and once mixed together it starts to cure and turn into a flexible mould. I had made up too much and not wanting it to go to waste I searched around the house for something to shove in it. This is actually a Pirates of the Caribbean doubloon that I had as a pendant just because I'm weird like that. So in that went along with a jewelled brooch. I have never needed to use this mould and it's been in my drawer for years. So it's finally getting its shining moment, a cheeky piece of Pirates of the Caribbean memorabilia on a fantastic beast cake. You can also use pearl moulds or chain moulds for more detail, anything jewellery based or treasure based. As they are gold, I'm using a yellow base, just pushing it into the mould, cutting the excess and popping it out. Make up lots and then get painting. You'll see adding colour really brings out the details. For the brooch mould I painted on Dry Luster, Starlight Comic White by Rainbow Dust. It gives it a subtle shimmer. The main coins are gold decorative metallics, non-edible as you just cannot beat it or match it with an edible version. Just remember to note on your paperwork to the client to remove the gold elements. These smaller ones have a slightly warmer orange glow, done with an edible luster called metallic ginger glow. It's more an antique, bordering on copper type of colour. As the birthday girl is a Harry Potter fan and a Gryffindor, we are adding a little nod with a scarf. This is yellow Renshaw paste and ruby red paste. Roll out the red so you can cut a few strips from it. Then roll out the yellow, keeping it a little chunky into a long strip. Add some icing sugar underneath and lay your red strips equally on top. Now this is another homemade mat. This was made way before knitting moulds and mats existed. So do yourself a favour and just buy one. <laughs> Don't think your favourite chunky knitted jumper would make a great impression mat and then completely ruin it by slapping this blue goop on it. It will leave a massive blue circle on the back of your jumper. Just choose your favourite knitted mould and press that all over your scarf. Trim each side straight and cut in little tassels. Fold this naturally around the back and side of the cake. The fun bit, add all your bits and pieces with piping gel. Add a string of pearls or a chain emerging from the bag. Now raid your sprinkle basket for various goodies, dragees, large coloured gumballs, confetti, anything and add them all around. I'm also adding balls of red paste to complement the scarf. Lastly, airbrushing brown all the creases, folds of the bag, 
under the pearls, the niffler's nose and the top. And we're finally done. A cute but cheeky little Niffler with his beloved jewels and goodies. Perfect for any Fantastic Beast fan or even Harry Potter. To keep it simple, you could swap out the coins for those foil covered chocolate ones. There will be loads around at Christmas. Hope you enjoyed this one. If you did, let me know with a thumbs up and a comment below. I do try to read them all. Thanks guys, see you next week. Using a nice straight edge, I always have a solid metal strip in my arsenal, which co- <laughs> Using an- <laughs> Using a nice straight edge- <laughs>